The Super Bowl is big business, not just in sports, but in marketing, as every major brand descends on football's grandest week. Most advertisers share the same ideology when it comes to consumer attention, the appeal of attractive women. But there are different takes on the rights and wrongs of what's become a multi-million dollar industry. We've been bombarded by these sexually charged images really since the 1950s. So if we look at some of these Super Bowl parties that are happening right now, where corporations are, are attending these hiring events and literally just hand-picking models, it's more and more difficult for these brands to stand out. So men are still the dominant salary earners in the workforce, and corporations want to tap into that buying powers. The way that's done is by using models from various talent agencies. Given the right look and the right appeal to the advertiser, women can make decent money but it's far from easy cash. For the Super Bowl, it's going to be a very long week, a um, lot of hours, and be very tired once it's over, like the players probably. In a day, you can make $400. It just depends on what company you're working for and exactly how long you're working. Of course, you have to get your hair done, your nails done, your makeup done. Spray tans are a must as well. It takes a lot of money. But there are concerns among women's rights groups that while agencies are cashing in with their commissions, exploitation can become an issue for the models. If we're selling sex on um, commercials and by uh, innuendo and by these lovely women serving beer and in the tilted kilt outfit or whatever, uh, it's also whetting the appetite of an individual who might want to then go purchase sex. So it's kind of, one's kind of feeding into the other, and that is something that I think as a society we should be very cautious of. But model Mackenzie Gossage insists that while tales of exploited models exist, women who sign up with reputable agencies earn a safe and reliable income. If you are looking to work in this field, you definitely want to make sure you're with the right people. During Super Bowl week, like any big event, there's obviously more going on, more people trying to get in on the action. Some agencies, I know they won't pay you. That's obviously a pretty bad horror story. Um, some girls, they put them in bikinis, just make them parade around. Guys are all over them, not a fun situation. Um, Push definitely has very professional companies that they are um, working for. When it comes to providing models for Super Bowl events, the PUSH agency is the market leader. It has a database of 60,000 models, and this week could make up to half a million dollars in profit. But how do they decide who's hot and who's not? Well, how do you decide? <laughs> What's, right, I mean, we're, we're guys and we, we kind of know, um, and women know what you know beauty is as well. It's, it's traditional. Um, what's in the magazines, you know, it's what you see on TV. It's not as subjective as you might think. Some of the elite have been in, you know, Playboy, they've, they've done a lot of work with, you know, Maxim. They're essentially true models, you know, versus the, uh, um, you know, girls that are attractive that um, dabble in this. So the pay ranges from, you know, the brand ambassadors make 20 to $25 per hour up to the, the high-end fashion models will make upwards of $40 to $50 per hour for, for Super Bowl events. Every brand on the planet descends on the city for the Super Bowl, and if you're not at the Super Bowl as a brand, then you're probably just not a relevant brand. Women serving as Super Bowl sales tools is a controversial issue that wildly divides opinion. But as long as there are enough models to meet the staggering number of jobs being offered, this is an industry that is very much here to stay. But I enjoy what I'm doing and I think I make a fair amount to do it.